the dark, dark tune, there was a dark, dark street. And in the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark office. In the dark, dark office, there were some dark, dark stairs. And down the dark, dark stairs, there was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room was where the worst wrestling tropes go to die. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ross Tweddle from Cultaholic Wrestling and welcome to the latest thrilling instalment of Straight to Hell, the show, of course, where my illustrious guests, you see, they offer up a list of their pet peeves from the world of professional wrestling. Then those pet peeves, they get shunted straight down into hell. It's a thrilling, never-before-seen concept, BBC One. Joining us today is a man off of the internet, more specifically, a man off of the YouTube and a man who gave birth to both Steve and Larson off of Steve and Larson going in raw. You know who I'm talking about. It says in the title down there, it's Nerd Cubed. This is a long one. This is a fantastic one. Over to Ross and Dan right now. Dan, how the hell are you doing? Thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us today. Thank how are you, you doing? Thank you for having me on this not going in raw uh, <laughs> YouTube channel. Yeah. Because that's, that's, technically, I'm, I'm, I might... Is this my Hogan moment? Have I shifted from <laughs> going in raw over here? Maybe I you are. Spray paint on this, shouldn't I? I should just. Ah, oh, can't remember. This is the thing. I think, uh, unlike everybody you've had on here, who seems to be people who very much know wrestling and people who very much are wrestlers, I don't. I only started watching when I was in like my mid twenties. Mm. I have no like childhood wrestling anything. Like I played the games with a friend of mine who used to go in his house. And so I knew The Undertaker because he had the big kick move that I could spam and win every single match. And that was kind of like, my knowledge was nothing. It was absolutely nothing. So I've got this like very Swiss cheese wrestling knowledge. If I've got like a, quite a chunk of it, but there's just massive holes missing. And people are like, oh yeah, this guy. And I'm like, who's that? He's like world champion a million times over. And I'm like, oh, okay. How does that Fair happen? Because normally it's the other way around. Normally we're all sort of balls deep in our childhood and then the balls come out when... Please don't say balls deep <laughs> in childhood. <laughs> That is. I realised as that was coming out of my mouth, it sounded horribly <laughs> wrong. But you know what I'm saying? You, you've done it the wrong way around. How does that happen? <laughs> well, like two minutes in. You said both. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I just never. Wrestling was never my thing. I mean, my thing, as, as demonstrated by the statues, why it was, was all Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that. That was my kind of. Oh, but I got into books. I was a nerd, man. I was, I was into. I went into sort of big Italian things and. and uh, and then I was I was living in London. I was living in uh, just just by Canary Wharf, the town Hamlet, um, literally just next to Canary Wharf. It was a wonderful little place. But it was I was one train stop away from the O2, and I'm like I'm gonna, just going to go see everything last minute that I can because it'll be cheap because they're trying to get rid of the tickets, and I get to see some stuff that I never would have normally seen. And one of the things was WWE, and I was like, oh, wrestling, yeah, why not? Let's go see what this is. And so I went, I'll just watch the most recent ones. So I've got a rough idea of what's going on. And so I did a, a Google, and uh, the most recent thing was a, a small event called WrestleMania 29, which I was like, you have to pay for this? And it was more to watch WrestleMania 29 after, because it had aired already aired. Um, it was more to watch that than it was actually to go and see it live. And I was like, well, I'll watch this and catch up. And I was like, I don't really know what I'm kind of watching for. And it kind of, you know, I was watching like, this is a weird thing. This is strange. And then there was a match. And that match, I always said, is the match that made me a wrestling fan. And that was CM Punk versus The Undertaker. And I went... First, I know The Undertaker because I used to play Here Comes the Pain and I used to spam his boot attack and I used to just, you know, absolutely wipe the floor with my mate's sock. You suck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever you're doing these days. Um, and I used to, um, you know, I had this. I had, Where's my, there it is. My ADHD twiddler. That'll be, that'll be I'll focus. <laughs> oh, you hear this all the time. this rattling around all the time. I'm quite good at concealing it. Um... Uh, sorry, you, I, my brain keeps going. He's at balls deep in childhood. And I just keep <laughs> going back to it. But no, so I, so I watched WrestleMania. I was like, oh, I really like that CM Punk match, The Undertaker. I hope The Undertaker's going to be there. Uh, a random Raw showing. Mm. And he was. Because what in my head I remember is the main event of that show was Daniel Bryan Kane and The Undertaker versus The Shield. And I watched that match live, not knowing that that's actually a pretty big deal. And yeah. going, oh, this is fun. This is quite a fun sort of... I, it wasn't the main event, actually. There was matches after that, but that was the one that I, I remember in my head. But I, I came away from that... I, I, yeah, I came away from that live show going, oh, I liked that. That was silly. And it was it was the crowd's energy that made me fall in love with it. Yeah. Because I've been to like football matches and stuff, and in football matches, there's this side, and then there's that side, and this side wants that side to die in a bin. 
and that is the energy of a football match. And with rugby, it's kind of the same, apart from you ha shake hands and go, and then you buy the loser's drink. It's, it's the gentleman's game because you secretly pretend you don't want them to die in a bit. And I don't know what happens in cricket, who cares? But in, in wrestling, the allegiance has shifted every single match. So there wasn't like a, a um, that sort of segregation of the, the two sides of the thing. If there was a match, it was, you know, the guy next to me with his kid, love that John Cena fella, but really didn't like Chris Jericho. And I was like, I remember Chris Jericho from the game. He did that submission move that my friend couldn't get out of. I'm going to root for Chris Jericho. And I, these allegiances kept changing and everyone who you were cheering for and booing for was moving around. So the room felt like just a group of people enjoying the same thing, which gave it more like a kind of a concert vibe than sports. But it was sports, sort of, in that weird way that it's sort of in that lovely grey every... It's sports, but we, it's, uh, it's, it's sports. And it is. And I think it is. And I love that energy of that crowd. I just fell in love with that. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to watch this all the time. Uh, and then I didn't, because there's loads of it. There is lots of it. There's even more now. It's there's got even worse today. <laughs> <laughs> just... Actually, I'm going to start this off early. I'm going to I'm going to throw my first one in the ring. Go for it, by first... all means. We're gonna I'm going to slowly drag these out throughout the thing. But my first one is there's just too much. That's my first thing I'm throwing out. There's just too much of all of it. Even like you know you can go like a few weeks worth of WWE output is the same as the entire Infinity Saga. And you can watch Tony Stark for like, this whole character arc of progress. Or you can watch like, Dolph Ziggler, learn a new dance. And it's like, <laughs> well, why am I, why am I committing that much time to this, this ridiculous small payoff? So you what know, is your what is your consumption like these days? Because obviously on a Monday we have on the WWE side we have Raw, on the AEW side we have Dark Elevation. Tuesdays yes. we have NXT on the WWE side, we have Dark on the AEW side. Wednesday we normally have Dynamite. Thursday you've got Impact if you fancy a bit of Impact. Friday you got SmackDown. Weekends you got pay per views. What are you watching these days? <laughs> I watched. Um... Uh, James Stephanie Sterling do some stuff on a live stream that was mm -hmm. fun and before that was the last AEW pay-per-view <laughs> that, that was it that's all I kind of I hit the pay I'm one of those hit the pay-per-view and then there's the middle bit but it's like it just I don't feel like you need because there is like oh it's the build-up I feel like you can just give me the build-up and I'll believe you when it comes to wrestling because I remember the first time somebody convinced me to watch NXT and they were like, oh, this is really good. And I was like, I'll watch it. What's this match? It's this guy, uh, yeah, Sami Zayn, his friend, Kevin Owens. Oh, they're friends. Oh, they're best friends. And then five minutes later, a powerbomb on the side. I'm like, but that was his friend! <laughs> 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 and, you know, I'm in. Like, I'm just totally into that moment. I didn't need that ridiculous level of build-up that comes with it. You're not going to believe it when I say this, by the way, but Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are still fighting to this day. They just had a match <laughs> at Hell in a Cell, which took place on Sunday, just gone. So they're still going at it even to this day. But the roles are reversed now. Kevin no. Owens is the good guy, but Sami Zayn is the bad guy. Yeah, no, because I, I, I watched... Because um, I kind of... W, I sort of fell off with. And I remember the exact moment I fell off with it, and it was The Fiend uh, taking 85 finishes from Seth Rollins in a, a match that was lit red. And I went, I think I'm done here. I think I've seen everything... <laughs> You've got to give, and I think I'll come back for my favourite event, the Royal Rumble, is what I like to come back for. Mm. And I came back for the, you know, the Rumbles. Um, but, and I try, this, I, I've been watching it with people I find it's more fun. I've been live streaming them, the sort of pay-per-view, not actually the pay-per-view, because I'll be killed by Vince McMahon mm -hmm. with a sniper rifle. But I'll just do audio commentary and people watch along with us. Uh, and it's quite fun, it's quite a fun little thing to do. And it's got a lot of people in wrestling who normally wouldn't have got it, which I think is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely thing to share. So I did the Rumble, and I've done AEW's pay-per-views. I was going to do uh, WrestleMania, but then it was like, with like, one of the Paul brothers, and I was like, no, nah, <laughs> that's my energy. Like, that's my, with WWE now, that's like, the, it's like, we're going to bring on one of the Paul brothers. I'm like, no. And that was in Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn's match, wasn't it? Was that against Kevin Owens? That was against Kevin, well? yeah, Kevin Owens, yeah. I think that was one of the only match I gave a crap about as well. And it was like, okay, Sammy, he's like, he's like, okay, so Sammy Zane's a conspiracy theorist now. And I'm like, all right, yeah, that sounds, yeah, sure. He's even better now than he was as a babyface, in my opinion. Sammy Zane is a conspiracy theorist. It's just fantastic. Love to see him, but for some reason they shoehorned one of the poor brothers in there. <laughs> Hang on, my notes have just turned off. I'm going to put them over here. <laughs> I've, I've written notes, people. Like, yeah. genuinely, this sounds like the ramblings of a madman. No, you ramble all you want. I'll sit back and say, stay quite gladly. <laughs> this is how going in Raw started. Literally, we, 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 um, Stephen Larson got together to do a, like, a, one of their machinima shows. What one was it? I can't remember now. I've been dead. Uh, ah, I can't remember. 
I don't know. It was a countdowny kind of thing. I can't remember what they called it. It's been so long. It's been so long. <laughs> um, and but we spent like two hours before it just chatting wrestling because like, oh wrestling. I was like, oh I've started watching that. Oh, yeah, this thing. And then they were like, he, he, literally Steve was like, I think this sounds like a podcast. And then they and then they they ran with that. Oh my goodness, they ran. Fun, fun. And they were like, can we just do a few extra things without you? I'm like, I am not needed anymore. You have my <laughs> blessing. Go. I'm like the Yoshi that they just punted into the hole to carry on. And, do and then they got some new guy on there. Who's that guy? I don't know who that guy is. Um... I've seen a few new fellas on there all taking your place. Have you ever been tempted to go? Because I think, was it the greatest Royal Rumble, your final appearance with, with Stephen Larson on camera? Was that the Saudi Arabia one? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that was probably it. <laughs> was that was that enough for you there? Just oh, I'm bowing out here. <laughs> the Saudi Arabia stuff, really. Like I, my initial list for this was like, oh, the contracts. And the Saudi Arabia was like, no, let's have fun with it. Let's keep it light. Um, but that was the stuff, and I was like, I don't want to watch this wrestling anymore. I want to go see other wrestling now. Um, you did, know. The, did the stand in Yokozuna not do it for you? Because famously, the Saudi Arabian, fa uh, the, the royal family who put on the event and gave Dory all of the money, all of the buckets of money, they wanted Yokozuna to appear. But WWE said, oh, he's a bit busy at the minute, you know, being passed away and whatnot, unfortunately. So they just got, on, got in a random other <laughs> big fella, Hiroko Sumi, I think his name was, to, just to portray the role of the Yokozuna figure, I guess. Did that sort of I, not tickle your pickle, that sort of nonsense? <laughs> I enjoy the fact that they're so rich they don't think death is a handicap. <laughs> Could you imagine being that rich? Could you just imagine that level of like, what, he's dead? No, you're working out. <laughs> Here's more money. There was a couple more who, who unfortunately aren't with us. Who... You know, you know, somewhere Vince has put some of that money into some sort of genetics lab. <laughs> like, there's just Vince with his green vats around and going, this is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, death as a concept does not work with Vince McMahon because that man is never, ever going to die. The amount of you cocaine know, he must have done in the 80s and he's still going now, it's incredible. You say that, you say, you'll say that one day and he'll die and he'll be like, the curse of cultaholic and then that'll be, that'll be you. <laughs> but going back to the origins of Stephen Larson, because of course you were the guy who came up with the going and raw name. I've heard yes. a lot. I've heard a lot of people. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people say that was just a joke because obviously going and raw penetration, all that kind of stuff. Yes. We're taking this back down that route again. Not with kids, everybody. Not with kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to know what the true origins of going and raw. It can't have just been a throwaway joke, and then it's became it literally this wonderful was a throwaway thing. joke that Steve would not let go of. <laughs> incredible that because it was the whole promise of, pr promise the premise of it was that i had never watched this wrestling but you know I, I was very new and he was like well we'll watch like an old one as well as the new one so that the podcast was like we'll watch it this you know the current show and then we'll, we'll talk about an old show that we watched so i was going in raw because i'd never seen the stuff it's a play it was very i was you know we were trying to work out time and i was like what about going in raw and steve was like yes that's the title now <laughs> and then just kind of i was like oh that's okay that's incredible, that. I'll tell you what, if you want to, people who don't know what Grown and Roy is, first of all, what you do in your life. And second of all, if you want to know what Cultaholic is like, if you were professional presenters who knew exactly what they were doing, <laughs> that is Grown and Roy. Because we did like a live stage show with Stephen Larson in Las Vegas at StarCast a couple of years ago. And me just sat there next to Stephen Larson presenting as they do like professionals. It was a humbling experience. Yeah. It was quite sad as well because I'm like I'm way out of my way over my oh, head here. That's what I like. I was like, oh, you guys, this is a this is a big thing, and I need to step back so you guys can go with it. Yeah, like, I'll turn up again. I'll turn up for something. I'll turn up for a, something. I was going to turn up for. I just I'm a busy man. Yeah, I'm a busy man. It's going to be AEW just... though, isn't it? Surely. Oh, it'll be AEW. I don't want to. Yeah. Say it. It'll be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, was I, it... oh, I've, I've definitely my my allegiance set because I just kind of I got. You watch, I mean, WWE gave me great moments, I ain't gonna lie, you know, WrestleMania 30, I think, is the best WrestleMania, and I, uh, and you disagree, because you made a five-hour video going through just all of the that <laughs> Madness. Absolute madness. It's a horrible, a horrible story on my part, because I said, Adam, Adam, you know what a great idea is, right? We should take all every single <laughs> WrestleMania match that's ever happened, and we should rank them all together, and then a, t a period of time went past, and Adam was like, oh yeah, we've got somebody else writing it for you. And I was like, well, that's a bit harsh because that was that was my idea and I've just been like pushed onto somebody else. So It was name, your going in raw. It was my going in raw. <laughs> just making somebody else's life a hell, basically. So not quite yeah. a going in raw, but sort of similar stuff. I've got a thing I need to show you, which okay. I'm, hopefully technology is going to work. Right, oh, so we'll God. click that button there. We'll click that one there. <laughs> can you oh. see? Oh, can you see things? I can see Steven Larson. Oh, Are hang they on. here to that? Is this like, is like this is your life? I'm going to stop that one. I need to do it again because I, I think I forgot to hit a button. Right. Share sound. I need to share the sound so you can hear it. There we go. Right. We're there. Can you see? Okay. I can Let's, see Steven Larson. Yes. Let's play. You know, man, I was thinking the other day. 
Remember how we did that straight to hell thing with Ross over at Cultaholic? Yeah. Like you did fun. it and then I did it. We both did it. Yeah. Like there was one thing, it's bugging the crap out of me. There's one thing that I left off my list of things that I think should go straight to hell. What's that? It's uh, the original one, one of the original founding members of Going In Raw. Not you, not me, but our third oh. man, oh. Dan. Well, you know I want you to go straight to hell, but I'm talking yeah, that's about... that's not a shock. Why, why, do, you, why do you say that about Dan? Well, think about it. Number one, he ditched us because we were like, hey, we want to do a lot of wrestling. And he was like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, he had his own, just all this other really successful stuff. I don't blame him for that. So he gave us his blessing and then we went on and became yeah. major YouTubers. Uh, and then on top of that, like he named our show Going In Raw. We're literally named after the worst show in wrestling history, <laughs> Monday Night Raw. That show was so bad, it's we decided bad. to stop reviewing it on Monday nights. So I was like, yeah, I honestly, Dan could just go straight to hell. I, I'm not, I would never tell him that. Well, obviously not. Dan's right. great. Well, oh. yeah, no, he's great, but I also want him to go to hell. It's both things. I hope I'm not... I hope he doesn't ever hears this conversation we're having right now. I know. I hopefully, you know, sometimes when we're on Zoom, you just record random conversations we have on a Sunday evening. I hope this isn't one of those times. No, no, no. Oh, wait a second. Shit. <laughs> Not only am I recording, it's sending it straight to Ross's email as it's happening. I didn't even know technology existed where we could do that. So, yeah. Ugh, hope, well, hopefully um, he doesn't show this to Dan. I hope not. But just in case, Dan, we miss you. We love you. And you can go straight to hell <laughs> with Ross. See what I did there? It was like a cool yeah, intro. It's a tie in. Yeah, it's yeah, a tie in. It's no. good. G. Kim, no. <laughs> there you go. Now, that was a thing now, there. <laughs> that was amazing. And I love that. That was like a surprise entrant. Who doesn't love a surprise entrant? <laughs> I do like that they literally think they can't leave me alone on a different podcast to talk about wrestling. Though that they clearly it's that sort of it's the helicopter parents. That's what they are. Anytime I talk about wrestling, they're always there like, is he behaving? Is he behaving? <laughs> also, got... I'm very aware that they put me in their hall of fame so they can shut. The... <laughs> really? Oh, I never knew yeah. that much. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they're the hall of fame thing. First entrant, actually. Thank you very much in the, wow. in the front of hall of fame. This guy. <laughs> It's fair. You did come up with a name. I guess that's a uh, Hall of Fame worthy enough. Yeah, which there you Steve, go. I, I did as a joke. And Steve is like, mm -hmm, yep, we're doing that one. That's amazing. <laughs> that works on levels. Have you seen the video? I think where they, they go to some sort of press thing for WWE. I think it might be one of the games. And they say to Charlotte Flair, oh, we're here for going and Raw. And she's like, what? <laughs> you, they, what? I don't think like start their videos with stuff like that. Yeah. I love I love all the famous wrestlers that have said a stupid thing that I came up with now. That's. <laughs> I feel like I'm part of it, you know, yeah. even though I'm not. But AEW will bring you back in hopefully soon enough because you still. I did yeah. a bit of a, a stalk on you, Dan. I'm not going to lie to you on Twitter. Ooh. And the one promotion you do tweet about, it's been a little while now, but the one promotion you do tweet about, like sort of this year, has been AEW. And was it yeah. Revolution? Because it seems like there's a bit of a gap after Revolution. And I was wondering, did the finish of that main event really turn you off that much to stop tweeting what, about was AEW? Was that the fireworks? Yeah. <laughs> was that the. Oh, dear God, the ring has exploded! <laughs> Oof. No, I, wa I watched the I watched the next one as well. I just didn't because um, I didn't watch it on the night for a reason I can't remember. I was going to live stream it and then I didn't. <laughs> I can't remember why. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember anything these days. But no, it was. <laughs> uh, I, I did watch it. I watched it over the next two nights. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. It was the, it was the outside e Stadium Stampede two. Really good main event, but that wasn't the main event. What was the main event of that match? We had the triple threat match. That was the, the stadium stampede was the main event of the night. And Orange the, 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 Cassidy, yeah. who I love, with yeah. Pack, who I love, with whoever else was in that match because they're not Orange Cassidy or Pack. Who's in that match? The world champion Kenny Omega. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, who I've seen say going in raw. Um, yeah, no, that was. I really, I, I, I thought that was a great show. That was a. It, it, I had to watch it over two nights. I don't know why I didn't watch it live. I think I was. Oh, I, I was sick because I'm a sicky boy. <laughs> Fair enough. That's what I literally. I was just like, my body was like, no, you're not staying up. I'm like, oh, but I want no. That's the word. I should have put that in now. That the fact it all starts at four in the bloody morning. Yeah. Um. This belt's really heavy. I, I, it's it's nice though, isn't it? I was going like to say, it? tell us the origin stories of that thing. Is that a going in raw thing too? Well, I guess it's not. No, no. This is. I want <laughs> this. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at that. Hey. Oh, look, you can see your own face in it. Oh, oh lovely. It's dirty, isn't it? Oh, oh. God, it's been crazy. <laughs> it's quite old because it's got my old logo on it. And it's, yeah. prop it's proper metal and everything. I had that made. 
because I was uh, um, an egotistical idiot. Uh, and I had it, mate, I did um, uh, this YouTube channel, you may have heard of it. Um, I did it for a little while. Uh, and it got a million subscribers. And they give you the gold play button and stuff like that. And I went, well, I don't want a gold play button. I want a bell. Mm -hmm. So I contacted, I don't remember who, but it was the guy who designed and made the, the well, the US title that looked that shape. Yeah. And I went, I want a belt that's that shape, but I want it to say YouTube champion and have this logo on it. And they designed it for us and had it made. It was nice. Wow. Did you melt down the play button? Uh, no, I wish I did. <laughs> oh, do you know why? Because I had this belt custom custom made from mm -hmm. scratch. The whole process. It arrived before the play button. <laughs> that's, you, that's YouTube. <laughs> Four months before the play button. <laughs> You'll have to let us know where you got that done because we might be looking for a new title belt as well. Mm. Yeah, it's heavy. I'm going to put it teasy, down on the floor because my knees are doing that. But there we go. Oh, back, to the point, back to the first thing we sent down to hell, though. That was the, too much of everything. Too so, much. Yeah, just too a, much of it. Just AEW. That's all you need, is it, Dan? At the moment, AEW pay-per-view. I, I used to watch Dynamite. For the first year, I watched every Dynamite because it was a it was short little thing. Short little thing that I could watch. It was one thing and it had everything in it and then it led up with the pay-per-view. But I, I lost a little interest when there was no crowds. Yeah, I didn't like the squeaky trainers and the, you know, the, just the absolute the move going boom. It just it didn't have the sell of the, it, it just it lost that energy for us. Yeah, that crowd so, inside Daly's place for whatever the hell the pay-per-view was called, the last one that we saw with uh, the stadium stampede. Double my mind's nothing. Gone, double or nothing. The crowd in the, my mind's gone blank as well. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd in the place for that thing just, oh, just made everything 10 times better. Oh, yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. But you had, to, I, I remember when I saw, there was that one dynamite where um, uh, Matt Hardy generated himself into the what's the debut there's a debut, yeah. w <laughs> and he was there and i was like what it's such a good and then the crowd's like because there wasn't one yeah and i was like oh no like my favorite thing is you know i like watching chris jericho debut on you know in in wwe all the way back when and watch videos like that where the crowd goes absolutely berserk because that's really the energy in that lovely it's such a lovely thing, and it's such a, a a kind thing because we're all enjoying the same thing together, which is rare, especially in sort of a competitive event. It's it's why I love Robot Wars, mate. It's why I love. <laughs> I went to see Robot Wars. I've seen Robot Wars films so many times as a child and as an adult, and it's just that energy. Everybody loves everything, and it's just that. It reminded me kind of of that, and Robot Wars is dead again, so. Yeah, it's so sad with Matt Hardy though, because when he debuted, I think he, I think we all learned in that moment there that he needs a crowd for that yeah. sort of delete gimmick to work, which is it's because he's not doing it anymore. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, really. it just it was sad. He just did like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you need. <laughs> there needed to be, there needed to be, yeah, and it just it just felt like it wasn't. I mean, credit to him, they didn't change a thing. They still went on with everything, and they told the stories they were going to tell, and everything they were saying or they went for. But I just think they all kind of fell flat because it was they needed to shift things up. I don't think, I, I don't think like that side of the art and entertainment really caught up until recently with sort of lockdown vibes and stuff. I mean, Bo Burnham's Inside is an example of someone who genuinely thought about it for a very long time mm. and went like that. And stuff like uh, George No More Jockeys. Not heard. Oh, No More Jockeys is Tim Key, Alex Horn, and uh, Mark Watson. And they invented a game where you say a name and then make up a rule based on that name and then the next person can't say a name that breaks that rule. It's like a game you'd play on the bus on a long journey. Right. But they are three highly trained comedians and they release a half an hour episode every week. And they did some live shows that literally are marathons. If you think a WWE pay-per-view goes on for a long time, <laughs> you watch three men argue about if a, if a bird is an animal or something. These bizarre... <laughs> it's just, it's the funniest thing. And that really is like proper just lockdown glory. Yeah. And I think they hit that quite early. But I don't think wrestling ever really got it. I think it's something that needs that crowd and needs that energy. But for me, at least, I mean, some people are absolutely loving it. So I kind of fell off watching Dynamite. But now they're getting honest is back. I think I might try and go back to watching Dynamite every week because I thought it was a great show. Yeah, it's in the it next... Was the next couple of weeks they're going back to live crowd so yeah yeah it was it was it was a, just it was a tight show it just it didn't you know kind of faff on it didn't have a thousand sponsors it didn't keep cutting away because you watch it on fight they don't cut away at all i love yeah. that that's amazing stuff that is um, that felt like the future you know <laughs> although <laughs> i do love watching an american pay-per-view where they're advertising american stuff and it's it feels like sort of fake adverts for things that don't exist it's, it's got that weird it's ad adverts with the uncanny valley effect. Yeah. It's a remarkable thing. You know, and every now and then you get one for like um, like just medicine. You know medicine, right? We got we got medicine and we just go to the shop and buy it and it costs like a couple of quid. Yeah. 
their medicines are for stuff that doesn't exist. They've got, it's like, are you afraid of hedges? Take hedge, phobia be gone. And it's like, hedges, hedges, you'll break your neck. And you're like, what was that for? Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, the, the brilliant thing about Thight in the early days of Dynamite was the fact that JR never could work out that his mic was still turned on when the adverts <laughs> in America were happening. So what he would say during those ad breaks, for us UK fans commentary. on Fight was just absolutely fantastic. That's he's worked the real it out. commentary. He's worked it out now, which is a shame. Oh, no. Yeah. I'll, he'll, forget, he'll forget it soon enough. But that was a glorious, a glorious time. So I don't know if you've what, heard yeah. of AEW Rampage. No. That is another show that's coming to AEW. It's a oh yeah, no, I keep fight keeps emailing me about another show. Oh, this, yeah. what's the escalation? Escalation? I've not heard they of that keep, one. They keep sending me emails. It's like soon AEW escalation or something. I've not heard of that one. If what you can that? find the email, yeah. I'm gonna find the email now. I'm gonna go through. <laughs> I'm just gonna go through my seven email accounts. So which one? Are you? Oh, ev- elevation. Elevation. <laughs> what dark, ele- dark elevation. Dark Elevation. Yeah, that's uh, the big show. Do you remember the big show from the wrestling, the big tour one? Oh, yeah, I like he, that. He's a, comment- like he's a commentator on that show, which is it's the same as AEW Dark, but it's got the big show doing commentary. Uh, that's what he's doing. That was a surprise. I like I like, uh, I like these, because because he follow. you know, I like I like watching the ones that jump ship. I think it's really interesting. I'm excited to see where Braun Strowman turns up. I was about to say, did you hear? Of course, <laughs> yeah, did you hear? You're like, what? <laughs> they got rid of Braun, like Braun Strowman. That, that was like... Yeah, he's the most Vince McMahon wrestler you've <coughs> ever seen in your life. He's large, he's got I, muscles. Yeah. Yeah. He was grown in that genetics lamp. <laughs> like, that was the first x They had a particularly large tank, and they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> it was like the Papov girls. They sort of like sugar, spice, everything like that. They're just like, muscle! <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's weird, because uh, Vince McMahon worked out, oh, I'm paying this guy a million dollars a year baseline. That's too much money. Let's just release him. Yeah. <laughs> you make that call yourself. It's not his fault, is it? Surely. Yeah, I love I love Braun Strowman. He was such a, a a beast to use the the less the term. But no, yeah. he, he really had that sort of like that mountain but quick moving and I like that. Yeah, no, he's good good. I enjoyed him. And then yeah, seeing him go, I was like what, I've heard of him. Normally the ones that release are the ones I'm like uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the like Samoa Joe. Was, yeah. Samoa Joe was weird though because they released Samoa Joe a little bit before, before Braun Strowman. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, no, I saw that. And then they, re- they re-signed him to NXT, so they released ah, NXT, him. And then, yeah. the, but like Triple H apparently was like, "What? What's going on here? You can't release Samoa Joe. He's actually really good, you know." But they've the re-signed him to NXT where he's sort of William Regal's the Dwight Schrute to William Regal's Michael Scott. That sort of oh, vibe. Okay. The assistant <laughs> to the regional manager who will punch you in the face when he's doing something wrong. So, yeah, it's, it's weird how these releases happen. But too much wrestling was the first thing we sent down to hell there. Just yeah. take it back half an hour. Dan, yeah. can I push you for a second thing, please? You can. <laughs> I'm going to consult my list. <laughs> what is this? What is that? Mate? What? I don't know any of this, man. I don't even... What? Oh, yeah, no, there he is. The Suicide Dive. <laughs> What move is that? We never see those multiple the times suicide, in one match. The 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 toupee suicida. <laughs> it's the worst move in wrestling because not only is it ludicrously dangerous, at the very best, at the very best I've seen it performed, it looks like a trust fall that you would do in an office. Yeah, that is the very best it looks like. It doesn't. It just looks awful. It really, truly is a move that I've even. I never. I'm like, oh yeah, he's gonna do that while he jumps through the ropes in it. There's no, like, flip or anything cool. It's just do go, <laughs> hope I don't kill myself. I'll tell you what, <laughs> do you subscribe to the theory that seeing the bigger lads in the wrestling? So Samoa Joe doing a Tope Suicide to me is impressive because Samoa Joe's a bigger lad and seeing him do the moves the smaller lads would do is impressive. Do you subscribe to seeing the, the, the theory that do, the smaller lads doing it isn't as impressive when the bigger lads are doing the same thing, if you know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Yeah, it does. Yeah, the small guy should do what the the old the old what used to do in one of the wrestling games was the the run up the rope backflip land on someone. <laughs> I want something like that from the smaller fellas. Yeah. That's what Pac would do. Well, Pac would eat the ropes and just get them out of the way and then just spit them back. But I love Pac. Have I mentioned how much I love? I love Pac as well. He's from my neck of the woods, so I've got to love him. Hometown boy and all that stuff. He does the flip over the top rope, doesn't he? Just the twisting. Yeah, I don't he know does. What you call he it. Does. Yeah, he does everything. He looks like he's attached to one of those like Catherine wheels at all times, <laughs> just spinning around. <laughs> It is weird. like an action figure as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird how the, the top issue we've seen over the past sort of five years, as I've been covering wrestling for a living, has just become one of the, well the most used move in yeah. all of wrestling. And it's never interesting. If you climb up the ropes and jump on some blokes, right? You've got the tension of climbing up the boats, where you're about to do the move, oh, danger, 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 jump, oh, and they catch you, and it looks like they've caught you. Well, then you've actually like hit them or anything. 
But like that's got a, a good rhythm. It's got a good thing. It's got a good pace in the match. It's such a quick move, the suicide dive. I don't think it adds. It doesn't add to a feel of desperation when you do this because the very it just looks like you've just gently pushed a man out of the way. You know, it it doesn't have the weight to it that they really want to say. It's not a move you can make look good. And this is coming from me, who has no <laughs> real wrestling knowledge. And I, I'm like, don't do that. Do it. And it's so dangerous. Like the people I've seen, like I've seen D. Bryan, clobber of Daniel Bryan for you, layman. I've seen, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen him really come down on his face a few times. I swear. And Cesaro, really, I remember once. Oh, Although he went Cesaro tall. really yeah. likes to injure himself with his teeth and all that. that was Cesaro, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, when he he nutted the the ring post thing. <laughs> was, yeah. I have never. I can't, I was watching. I must have been a pay per view then because I was watching that. I forget which one it was. It was around the time when he was in the bar with Sheamus, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah. That was a great yeah. tag team. And then he he tried to eat the bar and it was it didn't go over. <laughs> that was that was one of those like oh oh no. Kind of moment. And then they released that t shirt. I don't know if it was cruel, but it was a funny joke. I guess the the twist. Oh, yeah, twi- the- fireball. <laughs> That was beautiful. That was, was, that's, yeah. I should have. I should have got that shirt. That was a glory. Although it, it makes me feel physically sick remembering. There's some things that I just think look really good in wrestling, and that was one that looked really good because it looked like it really. And then you see he's actually not mistaken. Yeah. Um, I was like, are you selling that tea? Oh, that's a big blood capsule. He's eating. What's, <laughs> what's those little white specks all scattered about in the audience? It's his teeth jammed up into his head. <laughs> I foley that one time. That was a fun going in Raw to do. Watching Mick, Fo- Mick Foley's lifeless corpse be thrown about out of the cell for a while. Yeah. How he made it through that match. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> it with Mick Foley. I have no idea how he does anything. <laughs> I think that was the exact moment Vince McMahon was like, I need to start scripting all of this. Yeah. There was that I fantastic. To... I think it's after the first the first fall through the announce table. Vince is walking down the side and one of the fans in the front row shouts, that'll get your ratings, pal. Something like that. <laughs> You've killed someone for ratings, have you? Well done. All the best to you. But uh, what are some of the... What, we don't like a Topia Suicida, but what are some of the moves you do? Like, what is the style of wrestling that gets you going? Is it just someone smashing someone in the face? Yeah, I like smashing in the face. I think I always... I like a super kick. I know wrestling fans think, oh, no, I like a good, well-sold, or a big boot or a super kick, because it looks like you've kicked someone in the face. Although I saw that gif of Charlotte from the last pay-per-view. Missing. With the, <laughs> <laughs> missing. <laughs> missing quite far. Yeah. It was, I don't know how you'd miss that much, um, but I don't, you know, that's either, you know, lots of intelligent characters. It's like the Red Arrows, isn't it? They're not as close as you think they are most of the time. Yeah. But I like a good super kick. I think that's so well. Um, I like I like the flippy stuff. Look at me, self-centered. Then I nearly said I, I was good then, wasn't I? Yeah, I like I like a good bit of flip. That's why I think I like pack. I like someone who, you know, goes up the turnbuckle and then goes, and then lands on someone you're like, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And the guy on the ground's like, I'm just going to do like this and I don't die. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I like the, I like a good sort of standard well. I like, you know, basic moves done clean. I like a good suplex. Mm. I like a good, I like Lesnar. I'm, I'm I'm one of those people. I like Lesnar. I love, I love seeing Lesnar just, you know, Lesnar obliterating John Cena that one time in a summer slam, I think. I don't know. Yeah, 2014. Yeah. There you go, 2014. Now, yeah. Which was very early on in my wrestling watching, was a is a, I know I a Gog. I was a guy, and again, I've only seen John Cena for that time. But he was like, he's unbeatable. And then Lesnar comes in and goes, I'm gonna actually kill you now for <laughs> what feels like a six hour long match where you're just bleeding. It was that Simpsons gif of stop it, stop it. He's already dead. <laughs> it was just that for the whole time, and I adored that. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was wonderful fan- match. Fantastic, but he, he did the same thing literally for like the next six years. So people got a bit fed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> and especially Kofi Kingston. I don't know if you remember that one from when SmackDown debuted on Fox and then Kofi's had the fantastic title win. Not, I've got the, not, I've got not very shirt, good mate. rain. I've oh. literally got the shirt of the new champion shirt because I love New Day. I don't Heartbreaking. Know, like, New Day shirts. And you go, oh, that was okay. Oh, that was. Oh, I remember that being one of my. Oh, I need to step away from this. Yeah. This area of, of wrestling again. Yeah, that was. Oh, God, that was bad, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that's not Lesnar's fault, though. I mean, oh. Le- it's not Lesnar's fault. Lesnar's the, the person doing the stuff. It's writing. Blame the writers. Do you reckon he's got a little bit of creative control in there when he, he's getting paid all the buckets of money? I don't think he cares. <laughs> <laughs> I, right. I think he turns up and goes, Am I bashing in? That guy, let's go. And that's it, you know. 
bucket of money, please. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, in a real bucket. <laughs> what's your reaction to Ray Phoenix, Dan? Just going back to the sort of the flippy stuff that you like and pack blows you away. What's your reaction to Ray Phoenix? Because when I saw him first properly doing the wrestling in AEW, yeah. I thought I'd seen it all. Like, you know, when you've been watching wrestling like we do for, for a living for so many years, you sort of get numb to certain yeah. aspects of wrestling. But Ray Phoenix comes along and what he does on the ropes and when he, I don't know if you saw the time he sort of did a torpe suicida actually and he landed, straddled on the on the, the, the guard and it didn't hurt him. He mustn't have anything down there because it didn't hurt him. He just landed straddled on the ring on the ring thing. It was amazing. So what's your reaction to Ray Phoenix? I think he's incredible. Yeah. I love that stuff. And I think, yeah, the, the again with AW, they're pushing flippy stuff to the moon. And it, because they know it's suddenly going away is a beautiful thing. And they compare that to someone just lurching through the road. It's just not it's not got that elegance. I think wrestling is 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 dance, it's ballet, it's it's performance, it's it's got that loveliness to it. It's and I think that none of those boxes get ticked with a suicide dive ever in any way. Um, but if, I see even like when a big bloke does the very good, like w when they're fast, like Lesnar, like w one time it's the smallest thing, but Lesnar hopped over the the the, the, the guardrail to chase someone. I can't remember yeah. who was chasing, but he, he hopped Rollins, over. I think it. it was, yeah. As if it wasn't there. He just kind of just going at this speed, and the rail's like there. He just is like no, and it's just like you're like oh that dude's terrifying. And one time he dragged CM Punk. And if you've ever tried to drag someone in dead weight mode, you know it's impossible. And he just went, you're over here now. <laughs> and I was like, ah, dude's terrifying. I won't ask why you've been dragging some dead weight around like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're going to some dark belt. places. We're going to dark places this episode, I tell you. It's hell, mate. It's not, if it was straight to heaven, I'd be like, hey. <laughs> right. So the third offering, please. Third. I'm going to scroll down my list. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> the heel commentator. <laughs> so I'm thinking about the times you got into wrestling, sort of about 2014 sort of time. I'm, I'm thinking JBL. JBL. The, yeah. The, it was JBL. It was JBL in the games that I played. It was JBL now. It, it's it's JBL. I, I In the game, you had to play against this stupid at on and I, <laughs> I, I don't understand the role of the heel commentator. If there's a bad guy, everyone should agree they're the bad guy. And they can explain, oh, he's thinking this because of this, but that's naughty, you know. Probably probably won't say the word naughty. Um, <laughs> would liven up the commentary somewhat, but you know. But I can't I can't stand I can't stand the heel Imagine if Gimli Gimli was there before the battle of whatever how many armies it was going. I think Sauron's got some points! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to nod along the Greek because I've got no idea what Gimli is and I'm ashamed of it. I'm glad because you would have gone, that didn't sound like Gimli, that sounds like Vince McMahon again. <laughs> you know, he's just sitting there going with his axe going, you know, just, just, you don't have Morpheus. Hang on, I'll try, I'm for Morpheus, Morpheus, Morpheus no Matrix. No idea. <laughs> I've never seen it. I don't this is a, the thing, right? You I just watch wrestling. It's too much of it. You've only ever watched wrestling. <laughs> if you've never seen anything else. If I've anything, seen, I've seen sports. Seen... I've seen sports. I'm not, I'm not much of a film guy. I'm assuming these are all films. I'm not a film Television. guy. I'm not a gaming guy. They're the two areas in this job where I host a podcast with Matthew from Botchamania, and he's thrown all these references to films and games. I've just no idea what's going on. I just sit there and go, ah, yeah, Matthew, yeah. So I'm just going to do that now. Yeah, give right, me. Simpsons. Simpsons. I've seen the Simpsons. Simpsons. What if Marge was like, I think Sideshow Bob's making some good points here <laughs> about killing my son. <laughs> Oh, we get you. We go. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. I got that. I'm there. I'm there. I'm with you. I'm with you. So just to play devil's advocate, that's just because we're telling stories on commentary. We're telling stories, so we're, we're seeing the point of view of the heel and why they would, they would do this to further the story. Does that yeah. Not, yeah. You don't have to be on the side of the person to understand where they're coming from. Ted you Bundy know. wasn't that bad. Here's why Ted Bundy did those things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ted Bundy, not know who Thanos is. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, you just don't need... Again, yeah, if you're watching one of your million Netflix documentaries about serial killers, they don't cut over to, like, Stan on commentary going, well, you know, she, she had it coming. She was annoying. She, you know, you don't you don't need that side of it. And it just makes, like... It just make, it just blurs what they're supposed to... Also, it's annoying hell to listen to. It really is the worst <laughs> horror... You're just like, shut up, just shut up. He's like, I think that's a great thing when it's mature. They're like, oh, you would say that. I'm like, ah. my, the best thing I found out about the WWE Network was you could listen to it in Spanish. <laughs> God, that made everything so much better. 
Just, I was like, yeah, that's better. I don't know what they're saying, but it's... I, it's it, they're probably saying the same things, really. But yeah. it's just, I don't know. And not knowing... Ignorance is victory in the case of WWE in more ways than one. I'll tell you what, though. Modern day Smackdown with... I don't know if you've heard of Pat McAfee, who used to be an NFL player. Doesn't he who, make the antivirus? <laughs> yeah, his brother. He became a wrestler in NXT, had a match against Adam Cole, and now he's a commentator on Smackdown with Michael Cole, who is still kicking about somehow. After all these years, really? he's still there, yeah. But yeah, those, two, those two on Smackdown are just two people having a laugh while watching the wrestling. There's no yeah. three-man commentary booth, Lovely. and it's so refreshing. Because yeah, like, I, indeed. Michael Cole was so annoying to me for so many years. Just his, his scripted lines where he would look at, for the love of mankind, as he read off the script of Shame Up Man's Fallen to His Death. Um, but <laughs> him... His death? Yeah. I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> WrestleMania 32, I think it was, yeah. Um, but now, he's just he sat there having an... Uh, it's audibly he's just having a good time next to Pat. And it's so refreshing after so many years of the forced heel commentator, the forced yeah. sort of play-by-play straight guy, and then the, the babyface commentator on the other side. Yeah, it's a nice, refreshing yeah. take. Just have people chat about wrestling. That's what you've got next to you watching it. You know, that's what you do. You just want people to talk about the wrestling. If someone's being the bad guy, you, you just let them be the bad guy. Don't try and side with them because it ruins the thing. Because all you're listening is to JBL. I'm like, oh, well, if JBL likes them, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I guess I'm never going to like them. I tell you know, what, it, it, sorry, go on. I just, I just, and especially if you're doing like the authority angle, which was a big deal. All the commentators should be on the authority side because they're on the payroll of the authority. So I don't mind having three heel commentators. If you've got three commentators that are slagging off the paper, it makes them, you know, Daniel Bryan would have had a much harder fight if they're all slagging him off. Mm. But they're not. If they, you, you need to commit to, you know, because they're basically, they're company men. And the, the, the logic of the kayfabe, which is the two words that should never go together. <laughs> <laughs> there are zombies canon in WWE now. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> What was that? The, the, you know, the logic should dictate that if they've been hired, they should all be, you know, they're all reporting directly to Vince. Vince should be listening to that sort of stuff and controlling it. So they should be on Vince's side, basically, at all times, which would basically mean that they didn't like any talent ever and should bury everybody. But I think that's all right. You know, I don't mind it going that way around. But just having the one just irritate, like a gnat that you can't shift, it just irritates me. I tell you what, I find it so interesting that you bring this up, having not watched wrestling way back in the day, because I don't know if you heard of Bobby the Brain Heenan. I assume you have. Way, yes, yes. He was like the best cult, like the best heel commentator going. There was him and Gorilla Monsoon back in the day who were just bickering, arguing further the story by, you know, providing the case for the baby face and the case for the heel. And it seems like ever since then, through sort of JR and the King on commentary, Jerry Lawler, yeah. they've just tried to recreate that sort of that camaraderie and failed miserably since yeah. JR and the King have left. And it's weird how they keep persisting with it, but that's what it is these it's, days. It's, it's, uh, it's why well, it's Vince McMahon's biggest problem is an idea worked once, it will always work without mm. ever shifting it. And that's kind of what made me lose interest in WWE. Is I'm like, oh, I've seen this one. Yeah. You know, I've seen this story. I know where this one goes. I, you know, I, I want to be challenged as a wrestling fan. Something wrestling fans, I don't think I've ever really said. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, I just... You know, someone's enjoying the the puppet stuff and the weird stuff and the. I'm assuming that's still there. Yeah. I like, you know, I love the Undertaker. I think that's, you know, he's the dead. He's not. He's just a bloke, isn't he? But he just calls himself that, and it's the psychic's opponent now. And then you got the fiend, who's like a literally a demon from hell. Yeah. Me, like, and yeah. me and Tom were speaking about this because because well, I'm the same as you. I was like, I loved the Undertaker when I was growing up, and I loved Kane. I didn't find that sort of cringy and stupid. But I'm watching Alexa Bliss these days do her stuff with the puppets on Monday Night Raw, and I'm thinking, wow, that's a bit cringy and stupid. And Tom, who works here, made a good point. It's that they've, they've started taking their silly stuff too seriously. Yeah, <laughs> they no, that's they film, exactly it. They film it like it's not like they're trying to actually make a blockbuster film, and yeah. they're, they're just missing the mark completely. And because of that, that's making what could already be cringy and stupid even cringier and stupider. If that, yeah. or even words, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, no, that time makes it because because uh, I, I I can't remember who said it, but wrestling is the Muppet Show, and should be considered the Muppet Show. So it's supposed to be you go there, you watch five or six wrestling matches, you leave. But these feuds breaking out are not supposed to happen, and so the people who are running the show, the Kermit the Frog, uh, <laughs> you know, they should be scrambling to put it all back together and like, okay, well you can fight him, but I got over this over here, and it should have that sort of, it should feel like a show out of control. And it's, you know, you've got these big characters that want to fight these people for these reasons. It's like, you do the thing. To me. Um, and then, you you know, that's where sort of an authority angle naturally comes up. Because like, okay, I'll let you have this match. But you got to do a thing for me and fight this person that I'm having a feud with. And it organically does that. Um, having a, a guy who can't die in a, in a match is just... But I tell you what, I did enjoy that match. I enjoyed it and then just never wanted to go back. Yeah. It was kind of, I was like, that's a good finale. 
I, I think I joined, I was like, because it was like, I'm free now. Mm. I think that was the moment I was like, oh, I never have to watch this again. I'm not going to miss stuff. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's, uh, taking it too seriously, it's exactly, it's exactly the right point. It's, it shouldn't be actually demons. It should just be scare tactics between two men. Which is kind of the stuff that it does. Although, you know, historically I know very well that wrestling with Kane and Undertaker have gone weird stuff before. But, you know, demons happen, ghosts happen, now zombies happen. Yeah, I'll let some of it slide. But I, I, I think, yeah, focusing on it and... It's the reactions from the wrestlers that, that don't sell it. They, they oversell it and it doesn't sell it. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a... Oh, God, what was it? Randy Orton versus The Fiend. Or just Bray Wyatt. Can't remember. And there was, like, maggots projecting on the ring. Yeah, he was like, oh, no, maggots all over me! And it's quite clearly a projection on the <laughs> ring. And you're like, no, you've not... No, don't. It's just sometimes yeah. these ideas, they work wonderfully well on a sheet of paper when we're going to do this and this will look cool. Yeah. And then in practice, it never quite looks the same. We're going to explode a ring with John Moxley in it. <laughs> it's going to look amazing. What's the fireworks budget? A tenner. <laughs> <laughs> It is strange though, but back to the commentary point at hand. Um, if we were making, I was about to say N N N Nerd Cubed Wrestling. N N N. Oh yeah, no, I see. You, you, three N's. Because yeah. like three WWE N N N. Um, yeah. Uh, who are the commentators for that promotion? Oh. If you had uh, to pick anybody. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. First pick CM Punk. <laughs> yeah. I have CM Punk on there um, because that guy can talk. That guy's stuff. You know, actually, I wouldn't go for. Actually, I'd, I wouldn't go for wrestlers. I'll, I'll tell you who I would love to have on there. Oh no! Oh no! Right, here's the thing. Right, here's your heel. Right, here's your here's right. CM Punk will be your your middle, not quite babyface, not quite heel, but kind of is there to enjoy the wrestling and doesn't really care about what the other people will say, and just push it out in the wrestling a little bit. Arnold Rimmer will be my heel commentator. The who the hell is Arnold Rimmer? <laughs> from Red Dwarf, mate. From Red Dwarf, <laughs> Chris Barry's wonderful slut. Oh, you you've not seen Telly. I this haven't seen Red Wolf, You're though. an advert for the downside <laughs> of wrestling. <laughs> Probably oh, true for the last few years, yeah. I need to watch Red Dwarf. It's on my list of things to make my way through, yeah. It's been running for older than me. I know it has. Me. It's, 30, I know. it's still going. They keep making <laughs> the stuff. It's one of the most recent things was a film, and it was genuinely brilliant. It was, was it? really good, yeah. It's actually one of those things they brought forward and just kept all the car. They're just like, yeah, just keep going. It's just Now it's free old men in space. <laughs> 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 and a robot you know and I love the well actually one of them's a cat one of them it doesn't matter one of them's dead but not really and then ugh. yeah but anyway I, you know I want to dig into the world of fiction I think you could bring characters on in character because that's what WD wants to do they want to bring these characters on in character yeah you know you want to have you know if they're doing their wrestling if they're doing so the, the, the zombies doing the wrestling you know bring in you know Ash from Ash and the Evil Dead you know bring in you know <laughs> <laughs> George Romero to do it. I don't know. Go, go. A bit. I would go. I would get people who don't know anything about wrestling. I think you know when when someone's just sitting there calling the moves and stuff. I, you know, I'm not that interested. I know what the moves are. I'm seeing them happen. Yeah. I think somebody who's just bewildered and confused from the world of fiction would make a much better. <laughs> make a much better... The, the scary thing is, in terms of WWE, we could be on the brink of this happening because the famous, that that zombie thing that you've seen was a tie into a Batista film. Yeah, which has, has it, come out yeah, so, the, the Army of the Dead. And apparently, this is it. Nick Khan, who they've got working in a high up position for the company now, is gonna. He's in Hollywood now, just trying to make sort of connections with different things. So yeah. going forward, we could see God knows what getting involved in the wrestling just because it ties in with a film. So that, the, the anything could happen. <laughs> well, that's what you do. You get you know Hobbs and Sh Hobbs and Shaw, Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which yeah. is which is what's his face and what's his face. The Rock, and that's the one. Cena's in there as well now, isn't he? It's, everyone's yeah. in there. That film's been going on so long. <laughs> but it's 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 The Rock and and um, Jason Statham, right? Yeah, Vin Diesel so, as well. Yeah, yeah, one of them. I don't know. They look the same to me. <laughs> but get one, get them on the commentary, at, in character when The Rock's doing a match. I know he doesn't really anymore, but have The Rock. But The Rock's doing it in his character from Fast and Furious. That's what I want to see. <laughs> if you're gonna sell out, sell out. Don't even acknowledge the fact he's the rock. Introduce him as Hobbs or Shaw, whichever one he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, all we got for the zombies was Batista going, hmm, I've got this film coming out. There may or may not be some of my friends coming to the pay-per-view on Sunday on Twitter. That was all we got from Batista. <laughs> if he was on commentary going, Oh, I'm gonna kill these zombies because that's my job in the film, would have been yeah. so much better. <laughs> yeah. Would have been weird though if he's just sitting there being like, nah, more of this. <laughs> more work. <laughs> <laughs> I just want <laughs> just... a day off. <laughs> Revving a chainsaw. Oh. 
now I was done with this. But yeah, bring back wrestlers who've gone on to be actors in character. There's not too I don't many know how though, we is got, there? I don't, know, I don't know how we got from this from, oh, you know, The Miz has been in about 50 films no one's seen. <laughs> he's still primarily a wrestler, I would say. He's still yeah. very much, yeah, he's one of the main things on Raw still. Each and every he was week. The Miz was weird because I remember him going in Raw. They were like, oh, you, you know The Miz headlined WrestleMania one year. And I went, no, he didn't. Yeah. And then we watched it. I went, oh, that was awful. But I, I quite like The Miz now. I think he's pretty, he's decent. I enjoyed The Miz. I just remembered in my head that he was world champion just before WrestleMania. He had like yeah. a two-week reign, which I completely forgot about until just now. Right, like recently. <laughs> yeah, this year. He, wrote, he, he cashed in money in the bank to take it off Drew. And then Bobby Lashley took it off The Miz. And then Drew and Bobby had their match at WrestleMania. That's how that one went. Yeah, I didn't know Good that. God. Because <laughs> <laughs> people, were, people were kicking off because, you know, go back a couple of years and The Miz just like taking the, extracting the Michael out of Roman Reigns, just wipe, just making him a complete mug. It was brilliant television, but they never made him world champion back then. And then they had him do nothing for a long while and do stuff with John Morrison, making music videos and stuff like that. They just it wasn't wrestling. And then yeah. they made him world champion when he wasn't as hot. It was just a weird timeline of events for The Miz. It's always been a weird time. It was, it was him and Cena on it, or The Rock, or... C- yeah, uh, the I Rock. Seen that. Yeah, Cena, yeah, yeah in, the, in the main event. Yeah, Cena. And The Rock just turned up and ruined it or something. I yeah, got involved in the end, didn't he? Because he was the, yeah. the WrestleMania host. Oh, wasn't that the WrestleMania before the one I saw or something? Or like, it was close. We've been two, it was close. Two, it was two, two before, yeah, two before. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw... No, 30 was my second one, because 30 is the best. It has the streak ending in it. Oh, that was the... That was the best moment of wrestling. I know it's a controversial thing to Heartbreaking. say. That's the best moment of wrestling. Heartbreaking. Absolutely the best moment of wrestling. So do you not, my fate will always be my favorite moment of wrestling. Do you not care that it was Lesnar who took the streak and not somebody who, you know, could have used the win, used the uh, the, the brag, brag, like the, the ability to brag about toppling the streak? An up I and think comer. it led us into, you know, Lesnar beating Cena, which was also incredible. And then you can have somebody beat Lesnar. I, I, if you pass it on to a high up guy, then they get to keep that thing and then you pass it down lower, I think. Mm. Um, but I think, I think for a surprise, nobody thought it was going to happen. And that audience reaction is, I watch it once a month mate I love that it's my favourite thing that's ever happened on this planet <laughs> it, it's like it, you no, sick it man you sick man <laughs> it's so because it, you've have you ever seen tens of thousands of people simultaneously have an existential crisis no <laughs> it's it's and you never will again and that's what I love and that's you know that that Matt, it's the only one I, it's the only one I bought on Blu-ray so I can watch it <laughs> Legitimately, that WrestleMania is amazing stuff. Incredible. But for me, that's when it peaked. I peaked like a year into watching wrestling and it just never got back. Which I think for most people who went through the Attitude Era, feel this exact same way. <laughs> they yeah. start watching it for a year. Oh, it's the best. Uh, but no, there's... Oh, the streak in it, man. I, I've never... Because I, I was in... I was living in Finland at the time. So I was watching it on this like little tally in the middle of this woods in nowhere. <laughs> and I, I was, it, was, it was wonderful. And, it, you know, the streak in I literally got out of my seat. <laughs> and I've been watching it for a year. I can't imagine if you were like 21 years into this reign. Yeah. I know you started but, crying, me. It was emotional. <laughs> I was in my final year at uni. I'll never forget it. Watching it with people who weren't as fully invested as I was. But I was like, oh, I'm the, the sort of the, the closet wrestling fan if you want. I, I can't allow, I like wrestling too much, but I'm trying not to get too <laughs> yeah. invested. Then the streak ends. You're like, oh my God, I've had a beer. I'm going to cry. <laughs> 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 I love that. It was such a moment, though. I love you. Just watch those audience reactions of everybody doing the exact. It's wonderful. Yeah. And then they don't call it for a while, and everyone thinks it's a mistake, and they just they nailed that. That's when that's wrestling at its best is when they take what you think is going to happen. Again, it was it was uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Didn't that happen after the little thing appeared in the corner? The thing that's like you're safe now. The wrestling's over. Yeah. And then they did. <laughs> and then they did. And I'm, I think that's what it was. You know, stuff like that. I think it's beautiful when you've got this. When WWE breaks away from these systems that these, you know, this this repeated photocopied over and over again thing, I think they have a wonderful thing there. Yeah. Just to try this one for size, I, I went to a live show with Paul Heyman. Kenny McIntosh is inside the ropes. Quick plug there for Kenny. Um, I saw Paul Heyman try and suggest that the streak ending was a shoot on Brock Lesnar's behalf and <laughs> WWE weren't going to stop him no matter what happened. What are your thoughts about that? <laughs> I think if there's... I, you know what no I think Brock Lesnar has respect for The Undertaker I don't think he would have taken it yeah I think that's the only thing if it was anybody I think The Undertaker's the top and as always will always has been always will be that top sort of and it's just from watching the show I don't know anything about what's going on backstage you know I don't pay attention to that stuff but I you know I think the very top is The Undertaker and everyone respects that legacy and I don't think anyone would touch it mm. I don't think they would sort of go for it I'd be funny if it was though <laughs> but I genuinely think he would have sat up and kicked the shit 
<laughs> or at least try. <laughs> at least try. I think he was concussed, wasn't he? Probably good and proper. Collapsed and he got yeah. backstage and everything, yeah. Oh, oh, hang on. That leads us into number four. Yes, segues. Love them. Segway. <laughs> you don't even know what's coming up. This is no. wonderful. <laughs> number four is misuse of legends. Oh, wow. Is that in terms of them just beating the stars of today or is that something else? I, it's a lot of things. Because <laughs> I feel like there's three sort of eras you go through as a, as a wrestler. You've got like your... You're early figuring yourself out, learning the stuff. You see people with the actual potential and the talent and stuff like that. You've got your MJFs and your Sammy Guevara's in that sort of era. Where they're if Jungle Boy now. Who, who Jungle Boy's got like a famous dad, didn't he? Luke Perry from the Luke films. Perry. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't know that. I, was, I love finding out stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway, you know, you've got that sort of era. This, this, this sort of these guys are working really hard, and you can see their talent, and they're going to kind of rock it up. And then you've got guys at like the peak of their career. Where they're a few years older and they're just, they know what they're doing, they're doing it well, the crowd love them. Your Moxley's, you know, you, you people are sort of in that era and that's that sort of time, and they're just nailing it. And then you go up and you've got your, your stings and your undertakers and stuff, and their job is not to be the top dogs, their job is to step back down and push these ones up to this. Yeah. Sting and Darby Allen right now is incredible stuff. Um, the two matches, uh, they've done two matches that I've seen at pay per views, I don't know if they've done any more, but they're, um, the, the 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 sort of the filmed outside kind of ones. I love those cinematic matches. I, I genuinely think they're fun because you see that massive hole in the the top bit, and I'm like, oh, if they go up there, he's Darby <laughs> Allen's coming through that hole. <laughs> and I thought I thought that's a good way to protect Sting, making him look scary and wonderful and stuff. Then you watch the next, you know, the next movie, you don't need it. That guy can still go. I could not believe my eyes when I was watching him jump off that stage and all that stuff. It was incredible. Yeah, I, I just unbelievable. Genuinely unbelievable, and I and like some people. I see some people being like, "Oh no, you know, you're just going always oh, because he's old." So, yeah, he's. Have you tried doing? That? I couldn't do that. Now I'm thirty. No. Like you know, at that age, <laughs> the amount of wrestling he's done, still being able to do that, and genuinely giving a really good match and still doing all the stuff. I think no, you know, you should. Yeah, that guy's wonderful for that sort of thing. But then on the other side of the coin, and the side that I want to throw in hell, um, Undertaker Goldberg. Yeah. Um, which I I have never. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've never felt uncomfortable watching a match before um, in a outside of kayfabe kind of way. You know, someone gets thrown into thumb down, like, ah! But watching them, I was like, please stop. That, that jackhammer, when take his head, he's like that far away from, like, you know, getting paralyzed, yeah. essentially. It's, it was a horrible, yeah. horrible watch, especially when you've grown up watching them as well. I know it doesn't really apply to you that, but like Goldberg yeah. is the, one of the main reasons I became a wrestling fan because I got this VHS when I was eight and there was just all this footage of Goldberg just like killing these men. I was like, oh my God, this is <laughs> amazing watching this man being able to do this in WCW. And then he went to wrestling. And then he, yeah, and then he started doing that. But yeah, that was very much a thing. Like you, you can get to an age where maybe you need someone in there younger to sort of carry it to a good match and do all the bumping and the hard work and stuff. Yeah. And you just do, you do the things that made you famous and then go home and take your money. That's what we need there. Yeah. And that's what, that's what people want. After a while, they just want to see, you know, if I think that's why um, that match that I saw with Undertaker in a tag team, a tag team match. Get them a tag team where they get the hot tag, come in, do a few of their moves, and then, you know, take the thing as you were saying. That's what I want to see from the legends. You know, I don't want a one on one match where the age, you know, the combined age breaks 100. Mm. I don't think that's all right. Yeah. I don't think that's, you know, I, I don't want to see that sort of thing. And I, I think if you use a legend well, uh, I think you can get a lot, like a huge amount of prestige into a match. Um, and into wrestling, I think Darby Allen, who, who I think is wonderful, is is really getting pushed because of Sting, and more rivals are on him, which is great. And that's you know Sting sees that, and because they got the similar face paint, the story has become that, which I think is one like when Sting debut, which I was not expecting. No, I love I love sneaky debuts. Oh my goodness! And he he looks at the two sides of his face and stuff like that. I thought that was so that's so good. That's wrestling. That's maximum pageantry. That's what you want from it. And now, yeah, now we're seeing Sting properly go. And he's doing what he's comfortable with. And I think AEW is better at knowing, asking people what they're comfortable doing. And also, I think they're better at saying no. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think that's what you've got to do with some of these guys is you've got to go, no, you're you're done. Yeah. You, we, we'll have you do stuff. We'll have you run this bit. You know, you can ha we'll happily have you turn up and do a promo and stuff like that. But for the love of God, don't jump off those bloody roads. <laughs> I'm hoping that down the line, I don't know, maybe years time, two years time, someone isn't watching this back, and we've seen an AEW result where Sting's maybe became the world champion by pinning 
pinning Darby Allen or something like that, you know, because I, I think back to when you mentioned rest, uh, legends at the start there, my, 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 mind, yeah, my mind went straight to Saudi Arabia and WWE's put all this investment into this new character called The Fiend and he looks amazing. It's, it's all going well. He's looked dominating against Finn Balor. One of the best debuts ever at that SummerSlam. It was amazing. He's come through. He's, he's been shut at the world title picture already just because it was Halloween and they can sell masks and whatnot and make a lot of money off that. And then he goes to Saudi Arabia and then Goldberg, who I think at the time was 54, does a couple of spears and all that investment is pissed away and it just annoys you. It's like yeah. WWE especially look, love going back to have like nostalgia like uh, nostalgia nights like we had the one with uh, Smackdown recently um, and you think to yourself in 20 years time who's going to be there when you want to do a nostalgia night because you're not going to build yeah. up anybody to like that sort of status yeah which yeah. is why I, this is why I like AW because of all the, the young talent they are pushing yeah when MJ after the he's 20 he's like he's, he's 24 I think yeah it's sickening <laughs> <laughs> what a dick like, <laughs> <laughs> imagine being that good at that age and he's just getting he's just he just keeps working at it and stuff yeah, but he's he's what when he um, I I because people you know I, I've seen some people go oh he's uh, he's a bad guy and stuff like that you know people try people I like, try and get into wrestling they're like I don't like him because he's I'm like yeah that's kind of the point Good, of his yeah. character but you watch him take a punch from that kid from Brody Lee's kid he takes it like it's a bullet <laughs> and it's glorious it's just wonderful he's such a great it just ah. he's the, he... he's the future AEW feels like they're building future stars yeah AEW feels like a place that has a long-term plan for its talent. And WWE feels like a big hoover that hoovers up everybody so nobody else can play. Yeah, and then releases them. <laughs> and then releases Braun Strowman. <laughs> I could set up a wrestling thing with Braun Strowman. I don't know how you don't have... I, I don't know how you don't have anything for Braun Strowman to do. Imagine having... Imagine being... You're like, okay, you've just got to write a little storyline for Braun Strowman. And going, nah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it is Dude, baffling, Braun Strowman. isn't it? He's a yeah. living mountain. He, he, he's wonderful. How do you not have anything to do with that guy? Just put him with like a tiny person. Do a David and Goliath thing going on. They're done. Like just like you have a Rey Mysterio sort of like really nippy wrestler with a big sort of hunk of beef sort of sitting there, and you know do the sort of have that. Have to do some of that. You know, give him a give him a storyline where he's insecure about his height. I don't know. Give him anything. <laughs> it's Braun Strowman. <laughs> We just had that at WrestleMania where he was fighting for everyone who got bullied when they were young because he got yeah. bullied apparently. Yeah. Did he have a kid with him in one, one yeah. WrestleMania? He got a kid Nic from the audience. Nic Nicholas, yeah. Everyone loves yeah. Nicholas, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's around town, is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just the poverty. <laughs> he's actually 93. He just looks amazing for his age. That, so just, sorry, go on. You, that's just what, you, you know, Braun Strowman's got all this. I don't know how you don't use somebody with that level of talent. When you still, there's just so many people on the card. I'm like, but you're not, you're not using them. Either. That's the thing. It, it's so much of it, but they've got too many wrestlers for the so much. Yeah. And they keep going. Oh, well, I'm more shows. We've got these people to do stuff with, and they don't do stuff with those people. It never feels, you know, NXT. NXT was this like uh, wonderful place where they, it felt like you know they cared again. And I think that's why a lot of people. I don't know what the kind of vibe about NXT is these days. I'm assuming because I don't hear much about it, it's kind of petered off a little bit. It has been. It, it, uh, just speaking from my personal point of view, when it went to two hours, that was the big sort of. Oh, it's two hours. Kill it, kill it. It's all. It's on. It's on. It's not. It's not even. It's not even what it was set out to be. It was. It's now its own proper show. It's on the USA Network, like Raw is. Oh, really? So it's on a Tuesday night for two hours. Uh, it was initially on Wednesdays to go up against Dynamite because obviously WWE can't let anything else thrive. They need to kill it all. Yeah. But then Dynamite got better ratings, so. NXT moved to Tuesday nights and now it's funny you say this now because um, the most recent episode of NXT that's where Samoa Joe made his big comeback and became Dwight Schrute to, to Michael Scott uh, to William Regal's Michael, St uh, Michael <laughs> You've Scott You've seen the American office though haven't you? Yeah, I, I have yeah. all my references from now on All the way through I've seen it all um, it's, a fan. it's my favourite show don't tell the, the UK office fans oh, that. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this now. I, I've, I watch it through continuously. It's my, I have something on in the background. I need to focus on something. Let's just put something on the background. Eight, nine times I'm through it now. Yeah. It's better than the US office. It's not as culturally as important. It didn't, you know, give us a new sort of genre in the, in the. it didn't really because there was spinal stuff. But, you know, it didn't, it didn't give us that sort of, you know, the, you know, the stuff that I understand the cultural importance of the UK office. I just don't want to watch it. It's miserable. 
I made the mistake of watching the US office before the UK one. So I'd been oh, through the US yeah, office yeah, and then went to the most subdued UK one. It was like, oh, it's, not, it's just not quite as good in the, the early episodes. But I do need to watch it. Put your pitchforks down. I'll get there eventually. Where was it going yeah. with that? Yeah, Samoa Joe's come back. And it was a fantastic episode of NXT. So maybe the, the, the sort of perception is going back up again. But for a long time, it lost its way. And for me personally, it just became a show about wrestlers with kick pads doing cool moves. And I need yeah. more than that in wrestling. I need characters and storylines well, I, and stuff. I think the biggest problem is the call-ups. Because SmackDown and Raw, you know, tend to be a lot worse than NXT. And so it was like, at any point... It, it, you know what it felt like? It felt like in NXT, for all your characters, it, it, it felt like a show where hell was real and everyone goes there. <laughs> that's, that's the vibe. Yeah. That's the vibe you get from NXT. Hell's real and everybody ends up there. And... I just, yeah, I couldn't, you know, you see some people, and you're like, no, don't, where they're gone, where, oh no! It's so weird, because you get to know these people, because at one point it was developmental, so yeah, they're in developmental, they go to the main roster, they could change, but then yeah. NXT became very much its own thing, and you get to know these characters over such a long period of time, and then they go to the main roster, and because you watch NXT, you expect them to be the same thing, but yeah, then but different not. sets of eyes are on them, Vince McMahon's perception of this I don't know, Alistair Black, for example. That was a weird one. He had all these these debut vignettes, like these wonderful sort of cartoon things about the Dark Father and stuff, and like yeah. this stuff from his childhood. They were in the midst of Aaron, and he got released. Yeah. <laughs> it's just weird how, yeah, you, you get to know these people, then they go to the main roster, different sets of eyes from a creative standpoint are on them, then they just get torn up and started again. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. And now it's on telly. You think they wouldn't change. It's just people will change channel going, oh, why is that guy now a superhero? Yeah. Although I do love the superhero guy. What's the superhero? Ricochet? No. Older. Older? He appeared in a Royal Rumble recently and I probably marked out. Oh, the Hurricane! The, the Hurricane! hurricane. This is yes. a superhero. He beat The Rock! I watched that match. That was a great match. <laughs> I love that. I love that leaning into that side of wrestling as well. I, I love the the goofy. I think, you know, it's a really sort of goofy show. It's a goofy idea. Mm. It's, it's, it's a musical, but instead of singing, you do a bit of a fight. You know. Yeah. There's a fine line between goofy and just naff, though. I'm finding that more so in the pandemic era than ever before, I'm finding. Just with sort of the, the ideas they're trying. Some, sometimes, as I say, said earlier, written down, it's a lot better than it is in practice. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I always... I, I, see, I do like if you commit to just goofy. Like, I like seeing these weird indie things. i tell you what. If I had to do, like, top five wrestlers, I'd have to pick somebody from one of those weird indie things. And I, it would be... I'd get someone like the Silver Potato. Who the hell Who is the silver potato? Right, there is a there is a this indie thing. I think it's American. Uh, it's called Kaiju Big Battle. Yeah, I've heard of it. There, yeah. And they wrestle in the ring, but they've got cardboard buildings around it, yeah. and they're all big monster sort of thing. And there's the silver potato, which is honest to god, just a guy who's just added tinfoil to the end of his hoodie. <laughs> and he is my one of my favorite ever wrestlers because it's how I finally get people to explain what I love about wrestling. Because they go, this is really stupid, and they don't stop watching it. And I'm like, that's it. It's this is stupid, but it's not. It's not big. It's deliberately stupid. Yeah. It's deliberately silly. It's deliberately this weird thing, and that's my in. I just put these man, and he's got like they got like Doctor Cube, who's just got an angry cube for a head, and there's a <laughs> moth. Well, it was a dust moat. I can't remember now. It's weird, but I, I like I like kind of occasionally I'll just some of that will get recommended me on YouTube, and I'll be like, yes. I'm yeah. going to watch this one match that I think. But that would be, yeah, so stuff like, I like wrestlers like that. The, the Silver Potato, I just love because he doesn't look anything like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> it just, and it really, it just makes me laugh. And I just love that gimmick. And I think that gimmick is better than any WWE gimmick ever. <laughs> I'm really repping the Silver Potato here because I think I've seen like a few, like three matches with the Silver Potato and I don't know who it is. But just, it's just a big silver tracksuit wearing potato man. <laughs> so what's not to love about wrestling? His bookings are about to go through the roof, but it does take us yeah. back to what we were saying earlier. Like when wrestling does silly and treats it like it's silly, it's great. Yeah. But when they, when they do silly but treat it seriously, like it's a big blockbuster film, then yeah. the issues arise. Yeah, don't they? Yeah, and that's because it, it's just you get that disconnect. You can't. But you're you're you know you're allowed to go. Oh, I, I the Undertaker's a dead person. Yeah, sure, he's a dead. Can come back from live dead person, possess someone, whatever. You know, it's just this kind of thing. You kind of go with that. It, it's kind of is it the kind? I like it between that slight grayer of is it the man. He's kind of trying to freak people out, but he does it for so long. Oh, it's, it's believable. Oh, wait, here's a biker now. You know, okay, that didn't quite work. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, you get a suspension of disbelief that's fun. Yeah. 
and you can sort of lean into it and you kind of adds question stuff but i think when they yeah it's just that this is how the world this you know you don't you don't want a character to change how the whole of wrestling is viewed um that never goes well yeah uh, and i think that's kind of what the fiend is stuff was doing when i was watching it where it was just like this weird supernatural it's inexplainable and it's just like some obvious special effects stuff but the, all the rest is going like <gasps> and like that means that in that locker room You've got Dolph Ziggler, you know, who's just getting ready for a match, and then this guy with the fiend walks in and is like, "Morning, morning." <laughs> you know, is that is that what's happening? Basically, is there a yeah. Different thing? It's a it's a, it's a weird concept, wrestling, isn't it? How things just exist exist in that world, but, but then, then but then you're supposed to treat that, it like it's real, aren't we? That, but I, then, I, I yeah, guess. yeah, that John Cena versus the Fiend WrestleMania match it was awesome. <laughs> that was wonderful. That I'm like, wait, where does this fit in wrestling? Sort That's of what thing? I mean. The line between naff and silly is so thin as we're yeah. seeing with the Fiend. <laughs> Yeah, the fiend dances on that line, which I think it's a fun thing. It's it's you know he's clearly enjoying it and he's clearly trying. I just sometimes it goes a little. Yeah, you want to. He's dancing like he's seeing where the line is. I think is a really it's a useful thing the fiend is doing for wrestling. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, I like yeah if it fully commits to the silly, I'm I'm all about the silly. But also you know you fully commit to the serious. Give me a match that's you know the early Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn stuff. Like I was saying, was proper horrible. Yeah, brutal genuinely brutal yeah it's genuinely wonderful I love that stuff I like that sort of thing have you seen Roman yeah. Reigns recently uh, I saw him struggle to get out of handcuffs the last time I watched him Were the dog, was that with the dog food the, no Paul Heyman handcuffed, he got handcuffed to a thing and it was the uh, oh the last man standing match yeah last was Kevin Owens yeah that was one <laughs> oh. last man standing is better than have to be on your feet <laughs> That's why I don't name things. Is that, oh, that's when <laughs> they had the... Raw. <laughs> that's when they had the bit of the botch, wasn't it? When they couldn't find the key oh, to get the, the, the locker yeah, done. I, was, I think that was the first one I did like a live stream on as well. And it was funny. It was funny. That was good. But, but that, there's that... so many things you could do there. Like Paul Heyman should just shove the ref and the ref cell. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm out for the cat. But well, they kind of just squat in there. Yeah, I'm angry. And you're like, oh, it's kind of... <laughs> Yeah. But I bring him up because his change over the past year and a half to two years has been absolutely amazing in terms of like the more serious side of wrestling. Because I've been saying a long time on our podcast and stuff like that, there's too many, there's too many nerdy things at the top of a card, which is I'm, we're not getting enough people like The Rock or Stone Cold. That sort yeah. of vibe. I'm not saying we need people I'm like that. Sleep. Yeah, what, Moxie yeah. is definitely in there with Roman Reigns, like the more serious side of professional wrestling. Yeah. Do you think there's a lack of that these days or not? Um, no, I don't think so because I think you've got. Um... I think characters balance it really well. I think the really good characters balance... Because The Rock was not serious. The Rock was a very silly wrestler when he was sort of in the den. I, I don't see The Rock as like that sort of... Uh, and then, you know, you got your Stone Cold, uh, angry. But The Rock could go. Mm. You know, I feel like if you can sell that you can actually whoop anyone's butt, you can do whatever you want, really. And I think for the longest time, Roman didn't. For me, yeah. at least. Like, I, I have seen recent Roman stuff. Now he's a heel. I love that. Came back from like, the cancer scare. No, it wasn't cancer scare. He had it, didn't he? It was, uh, yeah, some sort of leukemia, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He beat leukemia and came back and was a heel, and that's wonderful. That is, take that. Because I love, because Roman Reigns was awfully written, that early Roman yeah, Reigns. Yeah. He, it felt like he couldn't quite go over the shield. He kept that music, he still had the body armor on. It, he kind of couldn't break himself apart from it. Well, Seth and, and, and Moxley went off to do their own special, wonderful good times. You know, uh, this, um, he just, he felt like, you know, oh, I'm doing the thing. And he was always winning all the matches, and he just, with his terrible bloody awful looking Superman punch <laughs> it's just it's a punch that's just got no power behind it it's just, thoughts it's, on Orange Cassidy using that by the way because that's one of his big moves now yeah but Orange Cassidy is in the full goofy side <laughs> but again he can go that's the thing about Orange Cassidy like his whole like he's one of my genuine favourites because he really can just he's he, he's got so much silly his little kicks and the crowd going man all that sort of stuff really plays the crowd well but then when when it comes to it he can really go like he's i think he's one of those um sort of real for me like when it because it was AEW, i was a bit you know like oh, do i want to you know watch something else go over to this new thing and sort of he was like the one that made me really go oh well, that's interesting i want to stick around because a lot of people were going oh my god when you see it when you see orange cassidy i'm like he's just really lazy <laughs> And that's a gimmick, and then I got it. It takes a while, but I think in WWE those gimmicks stuff like that's like an NXT gimmick. Mm, he's yeah. really lazy. Yeah. But he, like the whole thing, I remember I cracked up when there was that promo with the the best friends. They're like, "He's gonna try." I was literally, I was just about to say that was one of my favorite promos in AEW history. 
Just the fact, like, Pac, <laughs> he's going to try. Watch out. He's just going to try. <laughs> but yeah, the Roman came back, and this 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 new Roman who's the dick, who he, he looks like a dick. Like, he, yeah. you know, he might be this lovely guy, but he, like, the way he holds himself and the character he's built to be, you know. He's know. a smarmy dick. He's, he's a fantastic yeah. smarmy dick at that. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> he's, he's, they seem to have taken it. It was terrible with scripts as well. The suffering suck attach. Oh, you know... And they've taken that away from him, as far as I can tell. And it's yeah. more of a, you know, just laid it, back, like laid back, let like him do you know. his thing. Yeah. yeah, he's clearly a talented, a talented bloke. And now they've they've given him the rain, reins, <laughs> um, and he's he's running with it. He's doing great stuff. And yeah, no, I, I I'm enjoying the. That's one of the only things that's kind of pulling me back. WWE at the moment is the sort of interesting Roman Reigns, which I never thought would be a thing because it's like it's. Thing. But it shows that you can fix anything as well. And they're, ca- they're capable of doing good stuff because that SmackDown, yeah. SmackDown since I don't know, like sort of the autumn time, has just been the best WWE show by a country mile, in my opinion. Just each yeah. and every week, just the way that Roman Reigns story is going with the Usos is just absolutely fantastic. It's weird. It's the Usos as well, well I know. I just were like, yeah, they, can, yeah, they're right, and they, you know, the Usos, and now they got this big sort of family bloodline storylines going on, and it's like it's getting all Game of Thrones in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just wonderful stuff. It is. Yeah. So that the fourth point we talked about was the legends yeah. being used in wrestling, I think, was it? <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, sorry. How are you, uh, what's your longest one of these? I think we might hit it. We might hit it, yeah. I'm not entirely sure. It might be the one with Kenny McIntosh from Inside the Road. It's another plug for Kenny there. But uh, yeah, are we ready to go on number five? I'm ready. I mean, I could talk for hours. I've got like six hours for this thing. Hang on, let's just. Where's number five? Yes! Oh, number five is the worst. <laughs> I've saved the worst for last, right? And this is this is the worst thing about wrestling. Now, brace yourself, because this might be slightly controversial. Okay. Okay, brace. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, you're ready. Okay, here we go. Why can't the crowd count with the (laughs) Royal Rumble numbers? (laughs) Why can't they do it? It's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The numbers are on the screen! (laughs) Just count! This it's is a- the most annoying. Every it's the only because it's like become the only pay per view watch, and I just see and the AW did their like confusing casino thing where it's yeah. like we're gonna count down and then we'll show a card and then like some wrestlers will come out. I'm like, you do not understand why people watch this. Yeah. They want eh, you think you know me, you know that's what people want. Yeah, they don't want eh, graphics and then like some random people come out that they don't know who's in what group. Um, but even then, it was 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. And they just... They're on the screen. How can you let not count? <laughs> Do you know how irritating I find this? <laughs> this was a big thing. This I say a big thing. This was a thing I noticed this year in wrestling. Because uh, in the build at WrestleMania, Cesaro and Rollins, their feud was sort of based on the swing. Cesaro's swing when he goes round yeah. and round and round and round, round. And they wanted him to get like the most ever it that he's done which is I think he did on a, a Shikara show I think on, on the indies was something like they said he got to 100 but you go yeah. back and watch the footage yourself and you count because you one, can one, two, three, yeah. four and it's like one you know, it, gets, it gets I think it's like 78 or something like that. it's still really impressive but it's not quite 100 because the fans just start counting and lose their way halfway through <laughs> why can't you know you pick a point on the mat and then you just go <laughs> that's one, two we'll count Th- this guy's singing three, four, five I'm not sh- I'm not going to go with this guy I mean, it's, 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 it's literally it's just crowd psychology. If somebody says the number and it just it just gets faster. Yeah. And it's every time, but it's every time for every countdown in every Royal Rumble since the dawn of time. <laughs> What's the remedy? That's the the question you ask. What is the remedy to this issue? Well, I tried unleashing a global pandemic so there wasn't any crowds, but they just <laughs> piped it in wrong anyway. <laughs> no, I, the the remedy is people wrestling fans learning to count. Wait, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to let that fester for a second, that line. <laughs> <laughs> I know they can count. I know that they, you know, the people who organize wrestling go, oh, they can count because we'll give Charlotte the, the championship 55 times and that makes it sound like it's a big deal. <laughs> Unlike the fact that just also she, she's lost it 40, 54 times as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I think the remedy is to ignore everybody around you and do the right thing. <laughs> a remedy for life more than anything else I think I'm trying to fix life and society at the same time here I just it's just every time I don't know how it's every time I don't know how just what you gotta watch it every because people it's, there'll be some people watching this guy no they don't I've ruined the Royal Rumble for you 
To be honest, like, yeah, I was just about to say, I haven't noticed this one myself, but no doubt next year I'll be sitting there watching the Rumble going, oh my God, Dan was right. Every single time. <laughs> I just can't count to the... It's not in the game. The games aren't accurate enough. That's the thing. It's got to be in the games. Or well, maybe yeah. it's... I don't know. I haven't played the games for a while. But they didn't make it for a which, oh, which, which, are... which was the last one you played? Uh, last one I played properly was 2K16, which I thought was amazing. And then they started to add the progression through loot boxes... Yeah, and they're like, well, we're, not, we're not adding microtransactions. And then the next year they had the microtransactions. And you're like, yeah, okay. I see what you're so doing. You didn't play 2K20. Was it 2? Yeah, 2K20? No, no well, because it doesn't exist. It was called Battlegrounds, and actually, I did play was it. Was 2K20 not the one that had everything wrong? Because I swear that Adam does Oh, his no, life. you're right, because yeah. they're a year ahead. They're not like yeah. other. Th yeah, so it's 22 is the next one that's coming 22's out. 22 is the next one, year. yeah. It's great, isn't it? Because it's like, it's like wrestling from a year ago dated the, that year to ahead. That is was one like, of the main things I was wondering. The with guy who's modeled Braun Strowman just got fucked. Yeah. <laughs> all the releases that's happened, half the roster's literally gone from the game. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got no ridiculous? time to build new characters, I presume, which is going to scupper their plan. Because that was the thing, because I'm not a, a gamer in the slightest. I play FIFA and Football Manager no. and the wrestling games. And football Manager, that's not a game, it's a spreadsheet. You're just arguing <laughs> with. Oh, it's the best spreadsheet in the world. Um, yeah, the, the issue I, I saw. <laughs> that's from not a selling point. <laughs> you think it's, like it's the best Reggie in the world? Oh, but you're nurturing all this talent and you're setting them free on the field and you're seeing your you're plans not... and your good work come to fruition. Oh, ah, it's fantastic. Numbers, it? It's just numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but the issue for the 2K games from a complete outsider, I'm just admitting now I'm an outsider, was the fact they had too little of a window to make any sort of yeah. real improvement to what was going on. Is that the real yeah, issue? Yeah, I though? mean, the, the actual, the gaming industry has clocked on the fact that yearly releases are a really stupid idea. So stuff like Assassin's Creed that was boom, boom, boom is now sort of like two, three year gaps. Maybe even like maybe like three, four for this one. Um, Call of Duty still do yearly releases, but they've got three whole development teams on it. Right. So it's, it, you get, you got Treyarch and the, the other two that I never remember the names of. But they do sort of, they're doing one over three years, but then they release it yearly. So they were just make they're just churning that stuff out by doing it across the three things. But yeah, you got one small team making the same game. And the fact is, I think I really like the modern wrestling games. I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, they're the slow and boring stuff. 2K uh, 16, I genuinely think is one of the best video games ever made because it's it's I, it's even in my book. Like I wrote it, it like I wrote, it's in my like top 100. I put it in print, man. I just don't <laughs> believe that. I put it in print. I don't know what a number it is, but it's in there. Um. And yet you've got incredible creator and incredible stuff, but they're just getting greedy. And that's the thing, is they're just getting greedy. So so my interest in them dropped off when they were like, oh, we're going to... Because it was like, you unlock new moves and you could, you know, you get the in-game money and you, you unlock your new moves, you buy your new moves, you add them to your wrestler. But then it was like, okay, you unlock the in-game money and you roll a dice and see if you get the things that you want. And I'm like, that's <laughs> less fun. Yeah. Your time progression to random, that's not fun. And also, I know, because I've seen this, in next year you're going to have microtransactions, and they did. So now you can just sort of pay your way to the better characters. You're a FIFA fan, you understand. <laughs> um, you ruining the game industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's an uh, interesting yeah. point you make, though, because I, 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 I just see people online commenting about the games. And I see like the, sort of, the more modern-day 2K games. I see a lot of people saying the last good one was 2K14, I think. So you saying 2K16, one of the, I one like of the better 16, ones. I like 16, yeah. 16 yeah. was that when the creator was at its best. And the gameplay I really like, because that's when they added... They, it feels like the TV show, and it feels like it's an actual struggle to sort of play. And they limited the amount of reversals, I think, in that yeah. one. Yeah. I think so. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, and that was that's when because reversals were too easy to do, and so limiting them and they recharge slowly, it really adds sort of a, a different pace. And I thought it was actually paced like the show. I love the arcadey sort of here comes the pain one stuff. But I think what they were doing, the more simulator side, I think was a really what they were, what they had was a really good formula. I just think it's a 2K. The company that owns them is just very greedy. They do NBA, and which is yeah. literally a slot machine with where you occasionally play basketball, <laughs> and they're owned by 2K. Uh, who own Rockstar and GTA Online is just a big oh, right. machine to think. So it, it literally is just 2K just uh, take two. Sorry, just want to make money now. We just had E3, yeah. um, which is the big gaming conferences and stuff. And I'm up till stupid o'clock in the morning, you know, writing scripts and summing them all up and stuff. And all the big stuff do it. And they have these big things. They show off game after game after game. Or if you're Ubisoft, game and then nothing. Um, and <laughs> but. Uh, you know, Nintendo did it great. I enjoyed Nintendo's one. Uh, I had this one called Wholesome Games. It was great. But um, 2K, not 2K, Take Two decided that they had one and they had one on the schedules and they were going to do a talk in the time. And I, I didn't go for it because honestly, they can all burn in a bin. I don't really care because they're just, they're ruining gaming. But instead of doing uh, uh, this big sort of 
you know, a big conferency, you know, showing off games and stuff. They did a one hour Zoom call about diversity. <laughs> if you want to know how far away they are from understanding what people want from video games. And it was just about how we're really good for being really diverse in our company. It's good for them. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now, and now, yeah. So, so I don't I hold out much hope for the 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 upcoming two K games, even if they give it because they don't have Ukes anymore. Is it Ukes that? Because it's two. two yeah, yeah much. Um, they did get replaced, didn't it? I forget who it was. Yeah, but Ukes are making the AEW game. What's your thoughts on that one? Have you seen the the the, the Darby Allen stuff that got I released? I saw last the Darby week? Allen stuff because they, when they initially revealed it, it had sort of big silly character models. Look like all like stars that. from back in the day, yeah, the all stars yeah. game, yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's alright. But the, the the you know they've they've sort of made it go for a bit more realistic style, which I think is good. But again, with sports games, I just wait enough. There's microtransactions in it because if there are, they just kill the progression. I mean, I used to play, you know, not FIFA, but Pro Evolution Soccer because in the PS2, you play Pro Evolution Soccer because FIFA was a waste of time. But I remember Correct. taking my. You know, I used to get Southend United, and I used to get, you know, Crespo in there. He was a footballer that I remember from Argentina. You know, you, as you get them, you progress through the game. You know, 60, 70 hours, you're done with it. Yeah. But now they want you in it all the time, all the time, all the time, playing it, and all the time. It's fighting for time. Everything's just fighting for your time, which is why I think wrestling's too goddamn much of it. Um, <laughs> because it's like you could, you could watch, you know, a million hours of this with zero payoff, or you can, you know binge an entire six episode long British TV series <laughs> you could watch Raw or you could watch an entire series of Fleabag <laughs> watch Fleabag yeah. just re-watch Fleabag it's a lot you, have you seen Fleabag? I haven't no I've I put it on my list I've, I'm, I know I'm uncultured I know I'm terrible you. <laughs> I thought this was culture holic I'm on the wrong thing oh no but yeah I, yeah I, <laughs> I'm just going to loop on all the points I'm looking for. But I, I just, the AW game's looking good. I just want to know what the monetization is. Uh, I don't mind paying full price for a game. I like paying full price for a game. I don't want to pay full price for a game and then be mugged electronically inside it. Amen. Amen. But yeah, back to the, the, the 10 count. I don't think there's any, anything else to be said, is there? It is no. annoying. And I will it's notice so it next year and I will <laughs> think of you. <laughs> Unless this changed it. Unless all the wrestling fans go, oh, yeah. Oh, no, I've done it wrong. And it will change. But go back to any of them. You'll see it. <laughs> And it annoys me. And I don't believe you didn't spot it. It's, ah. Oh. I had this Unless I'm just seeing it and I can't count and it's me that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone comes like, what's he on about? It's not, <laughs> that's not a thing. <laughs> we'll see what happens next year. Yeah. But no doubt I'll send you an angry message just to let you know that uh, you've ruined Royal Rumbles <laughs> <You've> ruined <laughs> forevermore, which I can't wait for. But Dan, somewhere in the midst of this, how long have we been going? Hour and a half. There is five things that you've sent down to hell. Thank you very much for your time today. This has been fantastic. You're very welcome. Anything you would like to plug? Uh, yeah, uh, I've got a book. I've got a copy. Yeah, there we go. I've got a copy. Oh, hang on, wait. I've got. Any I need a post-it note. <laughs> it, it's called Yeah Video Games. <laughs> Thank you for censoring that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Yeah Video Games, and it briefly mentions the rest again. It's just a big book about silly video games. I've, I've got another one. I'm writing a sci a sci-fi novel at the moment called The Paradox Paradox, which you can back right now on Unbound, because traditional publishers hate me. <laughs> oh my god, the struggle to get that book in shops was a... No publisher wanted it. They were like, Why? Oh, it's, a book about, it's a book about video games that's positive. We, we're not interested. They're not interested in positivity. Mm. If it was negative, or if because I'm a YouTuber, if I could aim it at 16-year-old girls... <laughs> the only thing I've ever aimed at 16-year-old girls is derision. That's well, all I wonder where that was going for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and they're, they're just, I, I couldn't get anything. So, but Unbound is the sort of crowdfunding publisher combo. And they, uh, I pitched them and they went, yeah, <laughs> the proof will be in the pudding. And it's a Sunday Times bestseller now. So, and so available in paper. Publishers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, so I'm doing the second one with them as well. Um, but this, it's smaller, so it gets in their shops and things. But it's also, they just let me do what I want to do. I called it, yeah, yeah video games, for example, <laughs> which is in shops. Well, I did a book tour with it, and I loved my favourite moment. I was I was in the shop opposite, just waiting for... I got there sort of an hour early, so I think we're in Manchester. Uh, and I think it's a Disney store that I was opposite. So I was in Disney, and they've got a big bucket of my book out the front. I'm being like, this, not a bucket, it's not, it's not Home Bargains. <laughs> and now, now available in Home Bargains. But, you know, it's, um, it's just this stack of it. And this really, really old woman... <laughs> really old like properly like really slowly approached it I was like oh I want to see this reaction <laughs> and she picked it up picked up the, the, the book and read the title and just laughed just <laughs> laughed 
and then didn't buy it. <laughs> At least there was a laugh there. <laughs> Must have been a nice moment. Yeah, it was, I, I was like, oh, that's good. Because some people were, were annoyed and some people were their children and I thought that was a wonderful combination of things. But if you're, <laughs> if you're a kid, you want the book that has the naughty word on the front, don't you? Yeah, it's not for kids. It's really not. It's just, but it's, you know, the books are, it's, it's good. Yeah. I, think I aimed it for adults as well. That's, they were like, why is it for adults? Adults. They said it adults, which is a weird way of saying that. The publishers are the weird people. And I went, because um, because I don't care about children. <laughs> I have no interest or care. I like dogs. If I could write it for dogs, I would, but dogs don't play many video games. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame. Yeah, we there we go. Yeah. F yeah Games is out there somewhere. F yeah. F yeah, that's what we yeah, can do. It, yeah, it won't auto complete, trust me. It's not like YouTube back in 2016. If it was, then we would be able to say all sorts, but we can't now because of the rules. And oh, the rules I have, have a YouTube channel. I forgot. Yeah, yeah I, still, <laughs> I, and I do. I don't care. I, 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 yeah, I don't care. I, it's funded by Patreon, so there's no ads on it. I, I took them off. I was like, no, no more. I don't want to deal with YouTube anymore. Yeah. Because it's a hellhole. It's a horrible mental health destroying hellhole. Uh, I, I'm sure you've had. If you That's, why it, That's why I'm nodding. That's why I'm nodding. Yeah, yeah. It really it, it beats you up this place. Um, and yeah, just moving over to Patreon and shifting it there was a what is your glorious Patreon? thing. You are the address. The address for your Patreon. A Patreon. Such nerd cubed. Nerd cubed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got people who do that. The Patreon does really well. I got Matt. He got. I got a Matt. And Matt does it all. Matt's a nice guy. I've had a yeah. You've been talking to him. him. Yeah, trying to get this sorted. It's been lovely. But very yeah. accommodating, Matt. Wonderful man. Yeah. Oh, he's lovely. He's lovely. Yeah. He works hard. Lovely. That's what you need. That's what you need. Everyone needs need a Matt. A you need a Matt. Everyone should have a Matt. Do they come free from anywhere? Because that's the only way I can get one. Unfortunately, you have to pay them. <laughs> the government says. Damn, yeah. Matt. Yeah, what they like, but Dan, I'll let you go because I've had enough of your time today. I'm sure I'll let you go and do some lovely things with your afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. That was the latest straight to hell. We'll see you next time. <laughs>